OK, now it's OK. I'll uh, present uh, on uh, behalf of our director the analysis of the value chains on the products in Cameroon and health risks. So uh, just the plan covers the context and the introduction, then uh, the appreciation of the value chains uh, and uh, e the different steps that are taken, uh, you know, to establish the along the value chain. So we are talking uh, almost 2.9 to 3.5 uh, million uh, heads of pigs that we are talking about. So we are talking about three main regions in the central along the coastal line and the west. And uh, this is also aligned to the projects that have been put in place in Cameroon in line with uh, the breeding and the farming. So if you can see on the map, we have the zone, so the production zones and the targeted markets where consumption is sure. So in terms of breeding, it's extensive and especially in the extreme north in Adamawa. And then we also have a semi-intensive system which is uh, almost 60%. Uh, there we have uh, for to, uh, 10 to 20 uh, groups in the region, specifically uh, mainly towards the west of the country. And especially when you're talking about the large towns, the capital, Douala and Yaoundé. And as you know, maybe, we one of our main uh, obstacles here is uh, for us biosecurity is a real concern here so now since uh, 1982 uh, this particular industry has given been given the recognition that it needs especially so we have uh, regions uh, that uh, are said about that where we have had different uh, maybe episodes or developments that uh, have gone on varied depending on uh, the needs and the upcoming uh, practices. So these are named A, B, C. So when we talk about uh, the levels in the chain, so we have the suppliers of all the inputs and services, then there's production, and then there are others that we talk about up to consumption. So when we talk about what is, uh, what is linked to production, there's also risks in using or re reusing in the LSM program. And we also remember that when we talk about applications. So, so all these are people or groups that are taken into account when we, especially when we are talking about uh, 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 breeding at home uh, or in the domestic uh, context. So here the links here, we, we also have a link to transport. So we have the slaughterhouses that need to be accessed either by collectors uh, from the breeders. So maybe you, the, the, the breeders also want what they have to reach the slaughterhouses very fast. And then uh, more and more, so we have, you know, even the intermediaries coming and uh, stepping in to help in the transportation. Now here we have a graph that shows the value chain that, uh, and also reflects uh, quite well the entire production uh, chain. So from uh, the primary uh, actors uh, and all the ones in the middle, all the way to the end. 
So we also have a link with the Institute in Chad. Then we also have the transformative uh, part of it, which now helps us move from having the fresh pork all developed into other products. And uh, also this in response to consumption that is of a significant uh, degree or uh, And we also have uh, specific places where the pork would be sold all the way to restaurants and other, the, the pork bars. So here we have this whole chain capturing all that. So we find uh, in terms of feeding so that uh, the product is adapted, we have uh, a uh, good percentage of people who uh, place the demand for the products. And also, we also see how we can also improve not only on the projects that are presented, but also on how to, uh, when it comes to processing. So there are those who will find by the primary material and also those who will be dealing in the uh, transformed or value added uh, material. So we also just looking at how to keep improving the whole uh, chain or the system. This is uh, specifically to Cameroon. Also, the application, especially in the uh, producer and processor chain, and because uh, when uh, a breeder uh, uh, notes a disease, they um, will try and uh, resolve the issue, otherwise the disease will spread. When we look at the analysis of the uh, actors and practices, we can see between 2015 and 2018, we tried to uh, carry out this analysis and we noticed that um, there has been a reduction of the disease. And of course, uh, with the dry seat, season the implication or the consequence of the wild animals in the value chain of the uh, pig industry here we have some data uh, that we uh, tried to analyze so that we can see what is the distribution uh, of the uh, sweeters of uh, the swine in the uh, area. So we have some factors, uh, risk factors that are uh, linked, linked to the uh, distribution of uh, uh, ASF and its uh, measures to limit it. So none, uh, people do not respect the um, biosecurity measures. That is one issue. Um, we also have uh, uh, people who do not respect uh, the uh, breeding uh, or security measures in place, uh, weak uh, health such, uh, situation. We also have uh, capacity building for uh, uh, reproduction actors in the pig industry, as well as uh, uh, 
uh, uh, breeding techniques. Um, information on biosecurity in uh, pig breeding uh, is also another uh, factor we also have For the third chain, uh, which is the uh, that one that linked, uh, which is linked to the uh, breed uh, processors, we know that we have uh, um, a, a lot of activities undertaken in the farms without uh, respecting uh, biosecurity measures. So we need to do a uh, promotion and uh, associate co uh, risk communication uh, within the community. Uh, paradigm shift in the role of the farmers uh, um, in the uh, proper uh, the spreading of the disease, promoting uh, water use in all the uh, production areas. The last uh, chain is weak organization of the pig industry. Um, they need to put in place some measures at the regional and the national level be so this is the end of my presentation thank you merci uh, Jean-Marc thank you Jean-Marc um any questions I don't see any questions arising in the um, in the discussion in the chat box anyone have has a question please raise your hand i just had one maybe one question for you it's a detail but you you speak about bags um that leave the farms are these bags used for feed uh the, the sack the quel genre de sac uh, s'agit-il jean-marc yeah, you talked about uh, bugs. So what type of bugs were you talking about, Jean-Marc? Uh, thank you for the question. I think, in fact, uh, in terms of feeding, uh, um, we have the use of bugs in the entire chain to uh, 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 put, uh, you know, uh, the products. So the breeders go to get these bugs. And it, because it's a place where several um, uh, breeders go to get these sacks. Uh, so if there is one uh, breeder who has uh, a disease in his or her farm, then it's easy for him or her to transmit this kind of disease in uh, to the other. Okay, um, I think maybe uh, Casimir wants to comment as well, because I'm still not entirely clear on what is in the bags. Is it feed or is it carcasses or meat? Uh, Casimir, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Patrick. Just to add, I will, first of all, I want to congratulate uh, Jean-Marc for the good presentation. Yeah, I want to I can just say a word on those bags. Those bags are usually used by farmers to purchase, to purchase feed. They are moving from one, one feed mill to another feed mill from their feed, from their farms to feed mills with the bags that are sometimes exchanged. So it's a very bad habit that most of the time can disseminate the virus. But uh, Patrick, if you if you allow that will comment on something else. Yeah, Jean Marc yeah. made reference to a study carried out in 2015 on the value chain. It was a very nice study. 
I want us just to say in relation with what was said yesterday, that study may need to be to be updated. It was carried out on value chain, but it was the economic aspect of the value, the competitiveness of the different uh, animal uh, value chain in animal production that way, and that beef value chain, poultry value chain, pig value chain, and so on, and that way compared. So the, in the framework of what you are doing, I think uh, we can uh, suggest that that study should be updated, you know, in taking to consider the, the biosecurity and the risk aspect of uh, of uh, dissemination of disease in the value chain. That's what I would just add. It was a very interesting study, but uh, the, the, the biosecurity and the, the, uh, the risk factors were not associated with those studies. Thank you very much. Merci, Casimir. Thank you, Casimir. Uh, if there are no comments from Jean-Marc, we will proceed to the presentation by Côte d'Ivoire. Dr. Uh, Ouattara? Voulez-vous... Uh, do you want to share your screen yourself or must I do it for you? I don't see anything happening. Bonjour. Bonjour. Bonjour, Bonjour tout le monde. Uh, je souhaite partager mon écran. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, share my own screen. Go ahead, please. Je rappelle que vous avez 10 minutes. May I remind you that you have 10 minutes. Uh, sorry, uh, I can't share uh, my screen. Can you share it for me? Okay. Right, kindly confirm that you see the screen. Anyone? Yes, I see the screen. Thank you very much. So, thank you very much. So, thank you very much. Uh, the floor given to Côte d'Ivoire to talk about the analysis of the uh, value chain, uh, national value chain of pig. So, uh, next, please. Uh, we are going to uh, present you with the general information, uh, present on the uh, strength, weaknesses, uh, uh, critical points, and conclusion. Next. Um, the uh, pig industry in uh, Côte d'Ivoire is estimated at 431,000 heads in 2019. And we have about 69% of these uh, uh, that are traditional. The um, turnover of the actors uh, is over 17 billion uh, CFA uh, that was in 2014. Next. National production covers about 16.1%. Um, value chain, pig value chain. Uh, we have four uh, uh, chains in Cote d'Ivoire, but here we just uh, gave a small analysis of the uh, traditional and modern uh, pig industries. So we have family uh, breeding. So these are. Uh, this is the sector where you have a small uh, pig pigsty for the animals and uh, uh, that gives uh, you know uh, birth and then the rest of the animals will just be uh, free range so uh, you know the uh, uh, sellers you know move from uh, village to village without uh, 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 
looking for uh, pigs. So when you find yourself in a rural area where the population is uh, has the possibility of uh, uh, sending their pigs to uh, a seller who is going to uh, buy, uh, buy and uh, slaughter. And then we have others who buy from the farmers and send them directly to the slaughterhouses. And then the slaughterhouses sell to uh, rest restaurants and um, uh, no pig roasters. So all this can be fed by the um, uh, family uh, breeders or pig breeders. So then we have uh, the people who collect uh, uh, wastes to be taken uh, to feed the pigs. So let's move on to the next. Next, please. With regard to the modern uh, pig industry, we have two groups. We have the semi-modern and modern uh, industry. So the modern industry, normally we go straight to the um, uh, to the uh, slaughterhouses. So you look at the um, uh, movement or we have uh, people who uh, process pork and then we have some uh, semi-modern farms where we have some interactions with the buyers and the sellers and more. Uh, it's more than uh, the modern, uh, uh, semi-modern uh, uh, farm uh, systems. So in Cote d'Ivoire, you have uh, the slaughterhouses, they go, to the farms without really respecting biosecurity measures, uh, um, without uh, you know inspection from veterinary services, and then this uh, uh, meat will finally get, find its way into the restaurants, uh, uh, roasters, and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, generally, the population you know go into these points to uh, eat this meat. There are also uh, the big supermarkets that buy this. Um, meat and the population really uh, feeds on uh, a lot on uh, pig meat. So that is the uh, modern uh, pig industry. Let's move on now to uh, uh, the strengths, weaknesses, uh, and opportunities. Next. Next. Next slide, please. Strengths. So uh, we have a uh, political will expressed by the state through the ministry to support the uh, pig industry. There uh, is also uh, the uh, environmental, uh, ecological environment, uh, which is uh, favorable to the development of the uh, pig industry at the uh, national level. We also have uh, control that have been put in place uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, global health. Uh, today, we have a cooperative society that has been, uh, uh, you know, adv um, uh, accepted by the government. Next slide, next slide. Next slide. Next slide, please. Uh, furthermore, there is, you know, uh, further um, a bigger need for operators to produce uh, bigger quantities. There is also existence of uh, um, experienced operators who are working in the pig industry. Uh, existence of uh, um, uh, important infrastructure and um, production material in the uh, processing, uh, primary processing, uh, primary, secondary uh, pro processing uh, industry. And there is also an uh, existence of uh, marketing uh, in Nabijan within the country. Next slide. Next slide. Next 
applied. Opportunities. We have uh, an existence of, of a potential uh, consumption market which is on the increase. As also, a registered uh, industry um, as. Uh, the industry is uh, considered as a priority in terms of uh, by the ministry uh, of uh, animal and uh, fishing of fisheries. We also have existence of uh, favorable conditions for uh, uh, breeding uh, in quantities. Next. There's also availability of uh, road and facilities to facilitate movement of uh, products, big products. Constraints uh, or um, challenges, uh, installation, uh, anarchy, uh, you know, uh, very old installations uh, uh, are, and they need to be, you know, uh, um, updated. We also have a, a weak level of um, techniques used by the breeders, uh, difficult access or poor access of uh, um, breeders to genetic material uh, of good quality, uh, poor access of uh, breeders to um, uh, materials. Next. Next. Concernant les contraintes, nous avons des maladies animales aussi qui, 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 qui jouent un rôle important. Il y a la concurrence déloyale avec les produits importés, l'insuffisance de performance, euh, le dispositif d'abattoir qui n'est pas suffisamment décentralisé. C'est vrai, nous avons un abattoir moderne à Bidjan, mais les ports sont beaucoup plus produits au nord de la Côte d'Ivoire. Donc, généralement, les gens refusent de transporter les ports jusqu'à Abidjan pour l'abattage. Donc, la bataille s'est faite soit dans les aides de la bataille au niveau uh, euh, animal diseases. au niveau de la femme pour la plupart des éleveurs. Uh, uh, L'activité uh, commerciale du port qui est en marge formelle, comme je l'ai dit, elle est vraiment liée autour de acheteurs et vendeurs, rôtisseurs qui se retrouvent dans des fermes, tout ça. Elle est vraiment, euh, comment on dit, euh, informelle. Et puis, il y a l'insuffisance du contrôle sanitaire. Puisque la plupart des abattoirs, des abattages se font sans sans le contrôle des services vétérinaires. Diapo. Donc, euh, comme on le dit, il y a la recrudescence des abattages clandestins. Comme je l'ai dit, plus de 80 des abattages se font au niveau des femmes. Au moins, se font au niveau des sites qui ne sont pas connus des services de l'État. Il y a l'insuffisance des points de commercialisation, il y a le transport. Docteur Ottera, docteur Ottera excusez-moi. Il n'y a plus de traduction oui. en anglais. Je, il n'y a plus de traduction en anglais. Sorry, I'm back. I had been thrown out. Sorry. Okay. Uh, can I go back to the previous slide? Is that okay? Yes, please. Uh, this one we had done. Donc, on peut peut-être reprendre à partir des maladies animales? Yes, please. D'accord. Donc, je peux continuer? Oui, continuez, s'il vous plaît. Et parlez lentement, s'il vous plaît. D'accord, merci beaucoup. Uh, comme je le disais, so I was I was saying, uh, with regard to the contracts, we have uh, animal diseases, uh, diarrhea, uh, and SEF that is uh, uh, ravaging. There is also um, uh, some um, uh, competition, uh, unfair competition of uh, imported products, of, uh, pig products from uh, outside the country. We also have some uh, inadequate performance of the local uh, processing industry. Said uh, um, in, in the pig industry in Cote d'Ivoire is mainly uh, traditional. So there's a lot of uh, difficulties in transporting uh, products in Abidjan. So generally speaking, uh, the transformation, oh, sorry, the um, transportation of pig is done uh, uh, within uh, the uh, same localities where the animals are being raised. Next slide, please. Another uh, other uh, constraints where 
have uh, a lot of clandestine uh, pig uh, uh, abattoirs, uh, pig, you know, slaughtering. So everybody, you know, goes to the farm to buy and just uh, do it uh, in a clandestine manner. Uh, and this uh, slaughtering sometimes is not, uh, you know, known by the government. And then we also have insufficient points of uh, marketing. There's also um, transport conditions, uh, uh, transport and uh, uh, conservation conditions of products are not uh, adapted. Weak mobilization for funds or funds mobilization to respond to their uh, expectations. Uh, also weak capacity, uh, funding capacity for sustainable, um, for sustaining the uh, industry. There is also a weak uh, level of structuring and organization of the uh, pig industry. Next slide, please. Next slide. Um, threats. We have um, major AP, uh, you know, zoonotic diseases such as uh, ASF, uh, foot and mouth disease since uh, 19. 1996, uh, which uh, some of these diseases are dis disappeared and then reappeared in uh, 2014. So this has become, uh, we have uh, witnessed uh, some uh, ASF epidemies, uh, especially in the uh, bordering areas with Burkina Faso uh, and uh, other uh, countries. So we try to control these diseases. There's also the uh, foot and mouth disease, which is um, threatening these animals. Uh, and uh, uh, we've had uh, some times back, uh, you know, a loss of about 5,000 uh, uh, pigs. There is also unfair com uh, competition, as I said. There's also um, uh, a lot of exposure of uh, pigs, and uh, this exposes them to, uh, you know, a lot of diseases. And therefore, the uh, pig industry is really threatened by diseases. There is also uh, um, um, you know, the rapid urbanization, which is uh, threatening the uh, um, breeding zones. So we also have in next, next slide. Looking at uh, what is happening now, we can conclude uh, the, as factors of, of risk, uh, which is, you know, a lot of uh, free range uh, pigs, and that is, uh, you know, uh, a security, biosecurity issue. We also have uh, the behavior of the breeders, which is normally informal. So they sell from market to market, and all these factors, you know, predispose us to the SCF, ASF. We also have the use of uh, food uh, in the restaurants, uh, from uh, in the uh, uh, farms. Uh, and this is a risk factor, as we say. This. Uh, industry has uh, advanced, but it has been faced by challenges at the organizational, technical, and health uh, level. And uh, this industry is also threatened by a persistence of uh, zoonotic diseases such as ASF from 2017 in the, in the country. Thank you. Uh, I am done now. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Dr. Watara. Uh, Thank you very much, Dr. Watara. Je vois, uh, un commentaire Thank you very much, Dr. Watara. Chat. I can't see a comment in the chat. Dr. Wabashad de l'Union Africaine. Dr. Wabashad from uh, African Union seems to have a question. I don't think it is a question. It's more a comment about the brokers and the middlemen. No, uh, rather, it is a, a comment. 
Moi-même, j'avais une question. Euh, vous n'avez pas abordé le sujet de la faune. Euh, vous avez des éléments à présenter au sujet the... du rôle de la faune dans certaines chaînes de valeur ou ce qu'il existe wild... une chaîne de valeur liée au uh, facochère ou uh, au damage. aspect of the wild in the uh, value chain. Yes. Yeah, there is a market of uh, the wild animals. Um, uh, we also uh, have this market so in the country. So um, a part of the game meat is pig meat, uh, you know, uh, wild pig meat. So currently we are, uh, you know, working on the SF. Okay. And we're not taking into account the uh, wild uh, pigs. Merci beaucoup uh, pour votre présentation. Uh, Thank you very much for your presentation. Je passer la parole à May I now give the floor Dr. to Dr. Lemba de Kinshasa, qui n'a pas ménagé ses efforts Lemba pour, uh, pour nous rejoindre aujourd'hui. Uh, from Kinshasa, who has not spared any efforts to join us today. Uh, alors, Honoré, est-ce qu'on peut te much. voir et t'entendre? Tu peux brancher ta caméra et ton microphone? Très bien. You can see me, you can hear me. Yeah, here I am. Vous m'entendez? Can you hear me well? Yeah, oui, on vous entend très bien, Honoré. Est-ce que vous yes, avez un well. propre diapo ou est-ce que je le fais pour vous? Kindly share the screen for me, but may I excuse myself in advance do that for me? to say that I'm going to be autistic slowly, just speak but uh, without necessarily following what is being what, uh, projected on the screen, was actually but I'm put going to try quite and uh, fast. insist on but, uh, uh, the other speak without any Sorry, interpreters, I'm having two interpreters translating to English at the same time. Kindly mute one of the two. Apologies for that. Excusez-nous. Uh, je vais partager l'écran. Uh, Vous avez la parole, uh, Honoré. I will share the screen, Honoré. Uh, so we are also going to. So when we talk about uh, swine fever, it is like in uh, other places. So we are talking about the efforts that the country has put in. So this has been noted in the big towns. And then there's also the effect of the small scale uh, breeders who are also have a role to play here. So for the DRC, we have been able to pick out the following. The pop breeders or pig breeders. So, so we have a uh, lot of, uh, the, the, they are basically looking at the brasseries, you know, where with the public houses, where the demand is on and where they can also be sure to sell. So there also we have the sale of rice as well as wheat. So we find that uh, these bags that they use to buy the wheat or the wheat, those are the same bags that they carry to where they go to buy, you know, the other products. So when we are talking about uh, uh, the basic, uh, they, so the, what they add to the uh, food that is given to the pigs, so they, you know, to, to try and improve on it. So when they have the raw material and then they are adding all this rice and wheat that they have, uh, you know, come with. So this, uh, 
So here we have a situation where transfer of viruses is really uh, given an opportunity. I mean, it's very possible. So we also see that on these farms as well, we there's always the risk of her uh, getting you know the african swine fever so these uh, small scale uh, breeders uh, they are not fully in charge of their you know the troops they buy the sows which they simply breed with their male and if they do not have a boa in the group they simply go and uh, rent one which they come to, you know, come and, uh, you know, to, with the the, 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 the the souls. So once they notice that, uh, you know, the female, you know, the boy souls are on heat, they go anywhere, rent a boa, bring it over, and that is what happens. And this means that the biosecurity measures that are really in existence, this uh, gives sometimes it a way to a situation where things can really get bad. bad. So this is uh, one of the problems that we're talking about. So we have many producers who, you know, we call them malign. And these... <laughs> is... Uh, part of their services they have a, a number of souls you know to keep breeding and then uh, there is also another pen for other pigs that will simply be bred for sale so i come back to these bags or such that i talked about for this mixed uh, food so when we go to the big producers, they also keep reusing these same bags for other supplementary um, uh, purchases. So we find that the bags that were used for the pre-mixed uh, alimentation, you know, so they are carried, and sometimes you'll find it find if find it uh, make, making its way to the factory. So this is what uh, we notice quite a lot on our side of the world. So, like in uh, Congo, Central Congo, which is next to Kinshasa, so you'd find that we had a disease that started all the way in Angola and it has crossed all the way. So we find that the breeders, who, you know, the local breeders, so they are going to occupy an area, you know, along the rivers, which means that they are also now throwing, you know, the waste material what right into the rivers. So these are people who, that is how they know how to bring up, you know, take care of their animals, the pigs. So when uh, we have, because uh, pork is quite uh, consumed quite well, I mean, it's very popular. So there we are, there are people who are taking a beer, they are... They are also taking it with pork made uh, differently, whether it is the steaks or, uh, you know, uh, other styles of... Uh, so if we are talking about the animal well-being, sometimes it's not uh, fully taken care of because we do not even know many times, you know, under what conditions these pigs have been transported. Sometimes you're seeing them on the motorbikes. So to come back to all uh, that uh, we have so in, in terms of opportunity, I think that the popularity that has led to more breeding of uh, pigs, so that does not uh, really uh, look at what happens in the modern farms. And uh, we think it's very important that these facts also be brought on board.
So for the last uh, around in the last eight years, I think we came up with uh, a safe, uh, secured slaughterhouse. So, you know, to demonstrate how things uh, could uh, be done better. But at one moment, uh, we could see that the authorities had already decided to really address the dangers that are posed by the traditional way of handling things. What was going on was alarming. So those who bring their animals to the modern slaughterhouse would also get some kind of support from the authorities in addition to being sensitized on the possibilities of the problems that other practices could bring in. And in 2013, we had went uh, ahead to encourage uh, for slaughter using the slaughterhouse that had been put up. So it was to tell people, you know, we cannot continue slaughtering animals in any way that uh, we wish to. So we would say that uh, in Africa, the big problem is mainly that uh, the small scale breeders or the semi uh, semi modern farms are the ones who really transgress who really go against what needs to be done they do not take into account biosecurity measures because uh, when you bring people over to check or to survey what's being done, so even uh, we find that even those who are doing large scale production, they do not want us to go inspecting their sites. They simply want to p p practice as they want. So we would tell them no. There are those who will tell you, no, I'm the owner of this farm, but uh, when it comes to biosecurity, biosecurity is not only, we tell them that it is not only linked to the borders of their farms. So our presentation that was uh, evidently, uh, a bit, we are uh, in the process of responding to issues to do with management and also have documentation, images and graphs or you know, pictures so that we can complete uh, the picture as present. Thank you. Merci, Honoré. Um, ah, thank you, Honoré. Question, uh, any questions? Ah, there are any questions? I see none. So again, thank you very much, uh, Honoré, for, we know you had a lot of troubles connecting, so it's much appreciated. Thank you very much. I managed to connect. Um, I think next on my list should yes, be Kenya now. Yes, indeed. Uh, I understand that Dr. Kahariri is in the room. Uh, Dr. Kahiri, you have the floor. Hello, Bas, can you hear me? We can hear you very fine. Thank you. Please proceed. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Kahiri Thamwen. Uh, from Kenya. I'm a veterinary epidemiologist at the, vet at the Directorate of Veterinary Services here in Kenya. I'm also the, 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 the African Swine Fever Focal Point for Kenya, representing the Director of Veterinary Services. Samuel, so, can I just ask whether you have a camera? Yes, I do. Let me just switch it on. Let me just switch it on. Can you see me? 
Yes, we can. Great. So uh, I will be going straight to the presentation. And I can see my slides are now not moving. Okay, good. Yes. Uh, I will start by giving you a background and introduction of the pig sector in Kenya. And we can say that the pig production in Kenya started in 1904. And the pigs that started, they were actually imported from seashells. And in 1907, the Upland factory, we had a factory here which was constructed. And farmers in 1940 then started the, an association for the producers. So then the association progressed and it was dissolved in 1959. And then we had indigenous Africans starting to produce pigs in 1964. That is soon after the independence. And these were mainly around the Nairobi area, the headquarter of uh, the capital city of Kenya, uh, just a few radius there. And then in 1972, uh, we had upload uh, bacon becoming a large uh, scale factory with some government support. Uh, proceeding to 1996, the factory was closed and the pig industry declined. The processing limited to only one uh, company. So uh, pig production in Kenya from then has really grown for the last 10 years. And the main obstacles of the industry is currently the high feed prices and the introduction of taxes and levies on uh, uh, food, I mean, animal feed that has really seen a lot of farmer uh, go out of business. Uh, we say most of the commercial pig, uh, uh, pigs in Kenya are mainly exotic breeds and in, uh, which are intensively managed and concentrated around Nairobi. Remember, this is where we stay. We said even the production started around Nairobi. Even to date, we have more pig farms concentrated around Nairobi and the neighboring counties. Um, maybe from uh, the background, it's also important for us to know and note that we are estimated to have, uh, uh, from the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, the estimated figures are half a million pigs. But uh, that is an underestimation because from our assessment at the ministry, we uh, we estimated to be around 800,000 pigs. And this is the distribution if you look at this map. Uh, Nairobi being here, you can see the biggest population of pigs uh, around this part. However, this distribution of pigs in Kenya is uh, heavily dictated by uh, cultural practices and religious uh, inclinations, because our brothers who are Muslims uh, do not eat and also do not keep pigs. So that's why it is concentrated in areas that are either cosmopolitan or non-Muslim areas. And also we also have other cultures that do not actually uh, keep pig. However, the, the sector is really growing and the per capita consumption of pork is 0 0.4, and this is uh, slightly behind the um, bovine meat, which is 12.2, and mutton 2.2, poultry 0 0.6, and this is according to the FAO uh, uh, publication in 2020. So the recent estimates indicate that the demand for pork and poultry uh, products in East Africa uh, will increase fourfold by 2030 because of course uh, of the urbanization, increasing incomes and human population growth. Again, this has also been hypothesized by some publications and some data. So monogastric animals have shorter production cycles like pig and they require small land uh, area and uh, have better concentra uh, concentrate feed conversion rates than other ruminants. So this makes it a, a preferred uh, animal to keep by most uh, farmers. And they can even be kept when there is also constraint in lard and uh, without much demand on the same. So pork meat provide opportunity to cater for the projected increased demand for meat. So the number of people even consuming pig in Kenya continue to increase. And you could appreciate a lot of people who could not eat meat I mean, who could not eat pork, uh, continue to appreciate 
pork as a, an important source of protein. So looking at the value chain in Kenya, uh, we have the, the feed manufacturers and other supply uh, input suppliers like uh, and, uh, equipment and structure, animal health products, and of course the veterinary services. And then these uh, supply both the, 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 the farms, which are organized farms, and uh, the, these are the free ranging uh, pigs, which mainly depend on either soil or they just scavenge in the dump sites. But mainly, education huts, which then uh, give the light going and finishing, and then uh, wind piglets. And this is a light, uh, a light growing and finish uh, and finishing uh, uh, production systems. Then are able to are able to uh, actually produce replacement gills and replacement boas. And they also uh, provide a stock for elite processors. And the elite processors are the ones that are, are feeding the export markets. Uh, we had a very good presentation from uh, Sharon yesterday with regard to farmers' choice. And when we talk of the right processors, these are some of the people we are talking about. We also have another category of uh, elite consumers who also uh, benefit from that uh, value chain from the, uh, the multiplication hands. Uh, the others, we have uh, also things like pork joints, where people uh, are literally uh, eating uh, pork, either roast or fries in the pork joints and also we have other people who are literally going to the butcheries and buying the fresh uh, cuts and of course go and, co uh, and and cook in the in the in the homesteads so these pork joints and these butcheries then could be supplied by these free ranging pigs uh, a few of them are grown to, to, to finishing and then others are taken to slaughter slabs, and they of course some, uh, provide pigs for the uh, local butcheries and the pork joints, as we have said. So, from the from uh, from this, then uh, some of the key nodes becomes very important when it comes to African swine fever and control, particularly with these things we are calling the slaughter slabs, because as you will see, we will realize that a number of them are actually. And operating without being properly licensed and without adhering to proper standards. So uh, currently, intensive pig farmers and free range scavenging systems are most prevalent farming systems in the country. We normally say these ones form about 70% of the producers in Kenya. And majority of these guys are peri-urban uh, farmers in Nairobi confine their pigs so the peri-urban farmers who are around the urban centers, they have some housing of some sort, and sometimes even leave their pigs to scavenge around. And then this system is, uh, however, common in urban uh, of Nairobi, particular dumping sites. So if you go to most dumping sites in Nairobi, you'll find several pigs uh, looking for, I mean, scavenging for feed. And I think uh, that again becomes a very key note when it comes to uh, yeah, self control and containment in the country. Then uh, we have minimal or no healthcare, especially in these uh, free range peaks. Supplementing of food is uh, feeding is also uh, very minimal. Poor housing and high level of inbreeding because most of these guys do not even source for any sires elsewhere. So most they actually have a lot of inbreeding and of course deterioration of the quality of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the production. So as far as the inputs are concerned, uh, feed, feed alone accounts to 80% of the cost of the pork production. And uh, this has, as I mentioned earlier, uh, caused a lot of hindrance to the pig produ producers. And that is why most of them are resorting either to swill still uh, feeding or even uh, uh, letting the pigs scavenge for feed. So feed manufacturers are not specialized in pig feed, but provide feed for all types of livestock. So most of them you'll find they're actually having other lines of production, but they have also pig uh, feeds as one of their, of their products. 
So pig feed accounts for 3% of feed uh, output from the millers. So only about 3% of these um, I mean, uh, factories are, is actually the pig feed. So there's a lot of uh, mushrooming of businesses providing cheaper and uh, of course, sometimes poor quality feeds. And these again, really uh, digs into the pockets of the farmers because they invest and then they do not get the intended gains as far as uh, the pig uh, production enterprise is concerned. So farmers are increasingly uh, producing their own feed from raw materials purchased and mixed at the farm and supplemented with compounded feeds to cut costs. So farmers are going out of their way so that then they can be able to cut on these costs. So veterinary medicine supplies are really, uh, are really available, uh, though they contribute less than 2% of the cost of production, because most of these guys will not even call a veterinarian, but they will always uh, probably do it as a last resort. But a few of these organized ones who are also uh, doing intensive production then will do and seek the medical, I mean, they seek the veterinary uh, services and also these veterinary inputs. For the pig supplies along the value chain, uh, they, have, uh, they have been organized and mainly depend on traders and also the people we are calling brokers or the aggregators and the butchers. So these traders mainly are the merchants who buy the pigs from brokers uh, or less commonly from farms. We have traders who go to the farms that they already know that they produce pigs. They come and they aggregate, I mean, buy from this farm, from the other farm. So they really move across the farms to be able to aggregate and then sell or even take to production. So, that again becomes very important as far as the African swine fever is concerned because of the movement from one farm to the other and sometimes even to the Sarota facilities. Um, then we have the brokers uh, who are the merchants who act as the bridge between the farmer and the trader and uh, do not normally own pig. These guys don't have pigs, but they get commission when they bring, they, they bring a customer to buy your pigs and the person who is also buying gets, gets them a commission. So that's how they thrive. Again, very key for the transmission of, uh, of these diseases and also the issues of biosecurity. So that becomes a very key node. So then the large majority, which is about 70% of all slaughtered pigs are actually sourced from small scale pig farmers nearby Nairobi counties, I mean, counties of Nairobi. A small proportion of these pigs are slaughtered. I mean, uh, the pig slaughtered originate far away, uh, from far away counties from the Western Kenya. And uh, this we have seen from previous studies by people like uh, Dr. Akoko. So there's also a lot of illegal importation uh, from the neighboring countries because of the porous border. And the main country of source is, uh, of course, the Uganda, who are our good neighbors. And of course, the pigs in that region also happen to actually be grazing freely and then cross over to the porous border, graze, and then they graze in some of the families within our neighboring, within our, within our, our, count, our country. And then they are transported as a local pigs, even when they are actually not our own pigs. They are transported to Nairobi, uh, having grazed a few weeks or so in Kenya. They are transported as pigs from Kenya. So you will not notice that they're actually being illegally imported, but they just graze across and then transportation to Nairobi and other parts. So there are legal requirements for uh, the, 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 which is uh, pigs brought to the abattoirs. Uh, of course, required to be accompanied by movement permits and no objection permits when coming from different areas uh, or regions. So these requirements sometimes uh, will not take cognizance or will not know that these animals actually came from a different country. But then the enforcement and uh, implementation of these requirements becomes again a very key consideration when it comes to containment of illegal movements and containment of the disease. So when we talk of marketing, 
we have uh, marketing for live pigs. And here we are saying we are depending on the brokers, traders, and the producers who are very closely interlinked. Sometimes they, you might realize it's more or less the same guys. And then uh, slaughtered pigs. Uh, for the slaughtered pigs, then we have, we are dealing mainly with the meat inspectors, uh, uh, slaughterhouse workers, and of course the butchers. The eateries and the, and the butcheries, we also have a lot of market, uh, marketing uh, happening there because people consume uh, these roast pork or even uh, the fries from these uh, eateries and pork joints. So here, the main people here are the consumers and also the producers who supply these guys. So the processed products, we have, uh, of course, the processors, be it the small scale processors or even the large scale like farmers choice, uh, then are dealing directly then with consumers. And these are the people who are going to be using this. Uh, if you look at the photo on my right, this one was uh, by uh, Dr. Rian Thomas. And uh, it is uh, in part of, uh, of Kenya, Western Kenya. And this becomes very common, even uh, it's increasingly becoming common either the motorcycle or even a motorbike. And sometimes you could see the pig, sometimes even uh, is not tied, but actually carried by uh, the pillion behind there. So again, very important for us to note because I know then this uh, could have some implication when it comes to the, uh, to the control of the disease. Uh, borrowing from that photo, you can see the most common transportation People are using vehicles, and sometimes these transporters uh, actually could be carrying about 30 pigs per week. Others are actually trekking pigs if they are not coming from far off the slaughter facilities. So they literally track them. And uh, again, that becomes very important because as they trek, if they have uh, any infection, then it means all those areas that they are trekking towards, then we have uh, the problem with controlling the disease there. Then we have transport through motorcycle, which again, as I mentioned you, to you earlier, is literally increasing. And transport of live pigs is different from transport of uh, the pork. Because as you can see, this was one of the Western regions in Kenya. And this was a box that was expected to carry meat. And uh, from the look of it, I think we came to conclusion that more needs to be done with regard to the quality of the transportation or the carriers in terms of even the hygiene and also the other things that could then be able to help us contain the spread of African swine fever among other diseases. So that transport of motorcycle is very key. Then products are distributed mainly through motorcycles with a few traders owning cars and trucks with uh, meat boxes. So for the abattoirs, we have a, a, a few abattoirs in Kenya, and uh, the, we also have a very big chunk of slaughtering happening informally, even in farms, in the of owners just slaughter, sometimes sell to the neighbors informally, and also unlicensed slaughter points also exist. And uh, this then becomes very important for us to consider when we talk about uh, controlling this disease because there are certain biosecurity measures that are supposed to be undertaken to be undertaken at the slaughter facilities. And then if you have some illegal slaughtering going on, then that enforcement becomes a challenge. So that is another key node that has been identified uh, as an area of focus. There is, only, there is one large pork processing farm in the country that accounts for over 80% of the national supply of processed products, and that is the farmer's choice. The other five uh, main pig abattoirs uh, are around the country, but mostly around Nairobi, as you can see, and with their capacities uh, of the pigs that they are able to slaughter. So the remaining pork chain runs through an organized slaughter slabs and local backyard slaughtering, and that has been uh, documented through a study and the publication by FAO. There are over 300 small scale licensed um, in farm pig slaughter houses, slabs, 
uh, in virtually all parts of the country. And there, are, the, in all these sort houses, we realize there's some tendencies to have some lapses in the biosecurity measures. Because I remember one scenario where traders come with pigs in a slaughterhouse, house, they negotiate when they're already in the slaughterhouse, house, and if they do not agree, we have uh, hard cases where they are actually leaving the slaughterhouse house and going to sell the pigs elsewhere. Remember, the slaughterhouse house are supposed to be quarantine areas, and then animals that get in there then is expected that they will leave there as meat. But then the in and out movement then causes a serious lapse in biosecurity and potential for the spread of uh, African swine fever. Samuel, may I ask you to, to wind up because you're way over time. Okay, and okay. I think I have countries two, two or so slides, yeah. So the processors, we have large pop processors located in Nairobi area. And the main processor we have said is uh, Farmer's Choice and other processors in those other counties. So there is very low adherence to the international standards for most of these uh, small scale uh, processors. And I think that's again, very important. So for the wildlife, I think uh, it is important for us to note in the wild swiss in, uh, in uh, Kenya, there's like warthogs, bush pigs, and also the giant for forest hogs are abundant and widely distributed. And they are actually distributed in also the areas where we saw high distribution of pig population. Again, that interaction, if we also have the scavenging pigs, that interaction becomes very important for the, uh, for the disease spread and maintenance in the population. Uh, the occur, I think the, 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 that takes care of that. So feeding is a major uh, challenge and feed meal has faced challenges in the, of the availability of supply of uh, raw materials and that uh, contributes to the high cost of feeding. And of course, the high cost of feeding uh, also facilitates and, or encourages the, the scavenging and free raging, which is a key area. Diseases and parasites, and the key disease here becomes the African swine fever, among others. In breeding, because of uh, what we have seen at uh, the small scale pig producers, and of course, heavy levies and licenses required. And then there's also limited knowledge among the industrial value chain actors on various key topical issues. And inaccessible, uh, inaccessibility of the markets is also a key area and poor coordination among the value chain actors so that then they can be able to fight these uh, challenges. Uh, we have over reliance on hotel leftovers, which is a key risk factor. We have also uncontrolled illegal movements, which is also key. Poor production systems where we have, uh, we, we are not able to do all in all out and also free roaming pigs, as we have mentioned. Interaction of domestic pigs and wild Swiss, porous borders, a lack of compensation by government because when we are doing disease control, and we want to actually stamp out for the control of disease, you have to compensate the farmer. If you do not compensate, then the farmers are not willing to report the diseases to you. And that becomes, again, another very key important discussion to have. A weak early warning system because of that lack of compensation among uh, challenges within the surveillance system. Uh, the lapses in biosecurity, the throat process, which facilitated the spread of uh, ASF, as we have mentioned, is also very important. Thank you very much. And I think that's the end of my presentation. Over to you, Bart. Samuel, um, I'm not sure at which point this question was raised, but I would assume it, is, it was directed to you uh, from Pamluka from NVRI Nigeria. Uh, sourcing of pigs from smallholders seems to be a general practice, but how do you manage them to ensure quality and freedom of disease through the value chain? Is that something you feel you can answer, or should we ask somebody else? Anyone? I think the, the, the question was already uh, asked yesterday after Sharon's presentation. Um, 
whether bringing in smallholders into uh, major uh, companies helps push back the, the, the emergence or um, circulation of African swine fever. Uh, Patrick, yes, a comment? Yes, Edward, please help me out here. Yeah, yeah I think maybe uh, from a previous presentation from uh, Sharon, I think uh, uh, the other way we could have some level of control here, I think, is to emulate what Farmers Choice is doing, where they do this contract farming with smallholder farmers. And through that, they ensure that uh, they receive the right training and uh, so that you know the quality of products that come from them then can be guaranteed uh, as such. Uh, maybe if Sharon could uh, maybe add something around it. Yeah, I think I think the question has been adequately answered, and we also need to move on. Um, I saw that uh, Dr. Habib has repeatedly tried to join the meeting, but she keeps dropping out. So, Pam, are you going to make the presentation on behalf of Nigeria, which I have here with me? Uh, hello, Bas. Yes. Sorry, I don't have the presentation with me. Okay. Did you say you have it? I have it, yes, but are you familiar yeah, with because, it? Or, or not? No, I I'm saw not, that Habib. I'm not uh, yeah, maybe no, we should. I, I didn't discuss with her. Maybe we should give so her I'm another chance. Gonna... Maybe we should okay. give her another chance to connect and then. Um, yes. Um, yes. If nothing happens, we can still ask you to to do it on her behalf at the end of the of the presentation or the session. Uh, it's all right. It's okay. Right. This like, means that we move to South Africa. Um, is it Mike or Liana who is going to present uh, on behalf of South Africa? Um, I will be presenting. Let me just Welcome, see if Liana. I can. Thank you. Let me see if I can share. Uh, merci beaucoup, Bas. Merci beaucoup. Uh, <laughs> bonjour, everyone. Um, um, Liana will take us through the presentation. Thank you. Um, it's a presentation that was jointly um, done between the South African Pop Producers Organization of South Africa and then also the State Veterinary Services. Uh, thank you, Dr. Liana. You can take over. Thanks, Dr. Morisani. Um, so I'm uh, Liana Jans van Rensburg, and I am also the chairperson of the South African ASF Working Group. Um, so I'll briefly take us through some of our impressions on the, the pork value chains. I think this is an area in South Africa where more research is needed and it, it um, might not be the same throughout the whole country, uh, but yeah, we'll give some brief overview. So our pig industry is quite diverse and we have a, like we've heard through many presentations, we have the large commercial farms. Then we have smallholder farms, communal farming systems and backyard piggeries. So uh, pig keeping in South Africa is not the most popular. Uh, if you look at cattle, which is very popular in South Africa, pigs are not that popular and the consumption of pork is also quite low in South Africa, but we have seen some trends of this increasing. Uh, so starting with the large commercial pig farms, I think, as Sharon also mentioned, their systems, it's, it's very much similar. It's very intensive. They have good biosecurity. They're regularly visited by a, a consulting veterinarian, uh, like Mary Lou also in her clip this morning, many comply with compartmentalization requirements. And these usually have contracts with abattoirs to supply a set number of pigs per week for slaughter. And then they also slaughter for export markets. Uh, so we also very rarely see any ASF problems in these farms. And you'll see there's also just a picture of 
uh, the showering facilities of some farms and the, the security that they have on the farms. This is from, like Dr. Madhusani said, the South African Pork Producers Organization. They have registered producers. So they have all the commercial piggeries uh, in South Africa. And also, as, as indicated here, how many sales in which province, what type of uh, units they have, and so on a um, census on the number of agricultural households in South Africa, from 2011 to 2016, it seems that people keeping just a few pigs, so mostly backyard pig keeping or communal pig keeping, has drastically increased, almost double in the number of households who keep pigs of less than 10 pigs per household. And you'll also see the, the big commercial farmers are keeping many pigs. This is now heads of pigs, not cows, but heads of pigs uh, has halved in that time period those that are keeping a lot of pigs. So um, we see that we have a lot of people just keeping a few pigs. And this is what we think is mostly because this is a socioeconomic issue. So pigs are, like we know, a low input protein source. And with rising um, unemployment, people are looking at other ways of supplementing not only their income, but also their protein sources. So <clears throat> we've seen these smallholder pig, pig farms are very variable uh, in terms of biosecurity, time, terms of housing, in terms of marketing also. And what we've seen is they, they sometimes do slaughter at abattoir. They usually don't have contracts, but ask to slaughter just a low number, or they make use of auctions. We've seen, especially smallholders, because they have varying numbers of animals to market, they like to use auctions to um, sell their, their pigs. And these farms are usually very dependent on a cheap feed source to be economically feasible. So they would, typically you would find these ones have contracts with dairy farms to use whey uh, as a protein source or close to factories where they use broken noodles or something like that to, to supplement the feed. And we've seen a drastic increase in the, in the smaller commercial farms. It, it seems like either you go big and you are part of the commercial setup or they seem to not make it commercially. I think this is mostly because the pork prices in South Africa are very low compared to the feed prices. So the economic, economics forces people to either be large scale or to drop out. But what we have seen is an increase in communal pig farming. So in communities, uh, a lot in South Africa, they keep, um, so members of the community would keep pigs. And you can see on this photo, this is a setup. All of the community, there's a big air, open area and everyone just puts their own little pig styes together. There's a lot of free roaming pigs in between. Um, and there's minimal biosecurity. Usually they use this, for own slaughter, but they also trade amongst one another, trade between communities. They, when they slaughter, they may give away some of the meat or they sell the meat. You even see some little informal restaurants that have, um, that cook the meat there. And um, yeah, even in some places you, you find that there's the market for the pigs and you can either buy the pig whole or they go and slaughter the pigs at the back. Um, yeah, they really slaughter at the abattoir. And this is mostly because abattoirs are being hesitant to slaughter these pigs due to biosecurity risks. And this really is leading to a, a big gap and a big problem in South Africa with safe marketing. Because obviously if people aren't taking their pigs to the abattoir, there's no meat inspection done. There's no regulating the, the waste that's coming off of these um, slaughtering facilities. So, it, it really is a big gap that these, uh, these farmers are struggling to get their pigs to a place where they can safely slaughter them. So um, 
yeah, this makes a big problem. And then we've got the big backyard pig farmers. So um, especially in urban or peri-urban areas, people are starting to keep pigs in strange places. We've even found people keeping pigs in their garages. Um, and they usually fed kitchen waste, like I said, various types of housing. And they usually use this for own slaughter. And this own slaughter is also, there is not much control in this, uh, not control in the waste, not control in whether the meat is really safe for human consumption. And they usually also exchange, sell pieces of meat and so on. Technically, all of these is these types of slaughter is not legal in terms of our meat safety legislation. But again, it, it seems that desperate people do the big of they don't can't comply with what the abattoir requires and there's no really other legal way of slaughtering them except for consumption, but they're trying to uh, make some money out of it. So it, technically they can't sell the meat without it being going through an abattoir and the meat inspection. So for me, that is one of the big things that that we need some help for our pig farmers in marketing opportunities. In terms of wildlife interaction, in South Africa, we have African wild stewards, the warthogs and the bush pigs. They are resistant to the effects of African swine fever. Like we know, they're not like wild boar. They play a role in maintaining the sylvatic cycle in certain areas of South Africa with the ticks. Um, in those areas, like the uh, north of the country, if the piggeries are not pig proof, these warthogs are attracted to the feed and these warthogs can act as a tick transport. So they bring the ticks to where the pigs are and then we have transmission of ASF. And we don't really see it playing a major role in interacting in the, in the value chain. They are not really commercially slaughtered or anything like that. Uh, anecdotally, a lot of these transmissions when it happens from warthogs to pigs is when people shoot the warthogs and they feed that to their pigs. Or uh, in the one instance, they decided to hang all their skins on the piggery walls to dry out and that led to their pigs getting ASF. But uh, the ASF cycles we are seeing in South Africa is a uh, domestic pig cycle. So it's not, here and there we get isolated incidences of the sylvatic spill over into domestic pigs, but mostly it's just domestic transmission from people moving pigs and pig products. So the risk factors we are really seeing in our uh, ASF outbreaks is soil feeding. A lot of these people, communal piggeries and in back holder, uh, backyard pig holders, even some small holders, they collect kitchen waste in communities they collect from all the people in the community uh, or from restaurants or in hospitals, all kinds of places. And they really do need to boil the soil. So that in our um, awareness campaigns that we're doing is to please anything that contains meat or has, has been in contact with meat needs to be boiled. Free roaming pigs. So especially in the communal areas because that community can really be seen as a uh, epidemiological unit, that community should be functioning together to minimize risks. So even if the pigs are free roaming in that community, they should be looking at how they can um, keep ASF from coming into that community. And in some communities we've seen this has really worked where they've, um, all the members of the community have stood together and decided not to bring in any suspect animals to all of them work together so that it doesn't come into the community. Other communities, it's not working well. The people don't want to work together. They all have their own little piggery setups and they don't really want to work together. And in those, it's, it's very difficult to control African swine fever. Auctions, because there are so many contacts at auctions, we um, really need the involvement of buy-in of auctioneers uh, to have biosecurity and to make sure that only healthy pigs come to the auctions. At first we banned auctions in the areas where ASF was, but we realized that this didn't really help because people would just meet outside auction places and trade pigs. Um, and 
because I've, I've mentioned the marketing of low numbers of pigs is very difficult, it would be better for us if the auctions are better controlled and actually have their own biosecurity uh, that we know where pigs are being sold and so on than banning auction, pigs selling at auctions. Then potential contact with fomites. Uh, we've seen basic biosecurity can be implemented at a level of that pig owner. So even just having a pair of shoes that you only use when you are working with your pigs, um, not letting all your visitors touch your pigs or putting um, some metal around the edges of these wooden pig styles to prevent nose to nose contact with roaming pigs have all been shown to, to work. So there are things that might not need such a high investment in terms of money that can really help reduce African swine fever spread. And that is all from our side. You are welcome to ask questions. Thank you. Thank you, Liana. Uh, Mike, any other comments on your behalf? Yes. I hear them. So thank you very much. J just one minor detail. You spoke about IBR in your slides. What does that mean? Uh, it's just a type of metal uh, that people use for like metal roofs. IBR metal. It corrugated, seems to be corrugated iron. Uh, yes. So in French, that would be tall ondulé. Huh? Okay. Thank you very much. I don't see. Uh, let me just it's check. Not the name sure. of a disease, but yes, my. <laughs> it's not the name of a disease. A new disease. <laughs> well, I was. I was actually wondering whether you know my textbooks were outdated or something. But uh, okay, I'm relieved here. <laughs> I haven't lost it entirely. Thank you very much uh, to South Africa. We will now move to Togo. Uh, bonjour le Togo, j'ai compris que vous êtes uh, parvenu. Good morning à Togo, I uh, understand that you have managed to connect. Are you there Togo? Ah non, apparemment. Uh, la personne uh, qui est not. connectée à la salle. Ah, il est dans, à nouveau dans la salle de réunion. Uh, la salle d'attente. The There's no one in from Togo. Okay. Dr. Uh, Akako, est-ce que vous nous entendez? Je vois que Dr. vous avez une caméra, Akeko, mais vous n'avez pas de microphone. Can you hear us? I can see that you have a, a camera, but I don't see whether you have a microphone. Uh, Mr. Patrick, your microphone is off. No, it's not my microphone that's off. Is uh, oh, he has sorry. a problem that uh, okay. he, he doesn't have a microphone connected. Bon, um, je vais uh, bon, je vais vous parler en, en assumant que vous m'entendez. So, I'm going to speak to you. I hope that you hear me. I'm not sure whether you vous can vous hear connectez. me. Avec but you need to connect un appareil qui a un microphone with a, a gadget that has a microphone. Soit vous connectez avec un no. phone portable comme Just deuxième. Either phone use a, a mobile phone. Donc nous revenons vers vous something. Yeah. dans 10 minutes. We shall come back to you. Uh, dans 10 minutes, on time aura donné l'occasion à l'Ouganda de présenter. If uh, you have managed to, so we'll now give the floor to Uganda to make its uh, their presentation. Who is going to present on behalf of Uganda? I see Paul, I see Annette, I see Charles, I see Anna, oui. Charles, okay. Um, oui. Please, please proceed, Charles, welcome. 10 minutes. Thank you very much. I know nobody cares, but I will still repeat it. It's 10 minutes. Okay. Mais bonjour à tout le monde. Good um, morning, everyone. Yeah, I would do. If, if Dr. Naros is in the house, she could say one or two sentences. 
Hello, good evening, everybody. Hello, everybody. Yes, we Hello. hear you. How are you? You're coming through very. Hello. Okay. I'm happy to be here. Um. Uh, Dr. Masebe will in our presentation. Much for working hard. We are the largest consumers of in this uh, so thank you very much it is dear to us so dr masembe is going to and we shall be listening to him in the, the presentation greetings from uganda thank you rose thank you um Patrick, can I share my screen then? Please, please do. If you if you manage. Okay. So there we are. So um, thank you very much, and uh, we will present you what is happening in Uganda. Um, it was combined because then the, the, the beginning paragraph in the agenda does not speak about the wildlife, but also in the in the template there is wildlife. So we put everything in there. Let's see how we shall we shall move on. Um, so as the, as we may know already, um, the livestock sector plays quite a big role in terms of livelihoods in Uganda. And the pig farming is a, a very important uh, aspect. Um, it presents quite a very important opportunity for rural households because they get uh, um, attractive returns. And the, the dominant sector here is, is the, by the small, small pig holders, small scale farmers. Um, the, growth, the pig growth here is actually very fast because then we have about to, um, 14 million pigs. If you look at uh, 45 million people, well, maybe in the end you have about uh, 10 people sharing a, a pig with due respect to everyone. Um, <clears throat> so pig play quite uh, an important proportion in the livestock of Uganda, and uh, it has been steadily increasing um, with, the, with the time as it has been indicated previously. What happens when traders want pigs? They go and they buy from smallholder farmers. They put on one collection on a collection point and then transport to the urban area. And this is the picture which you see mainly in many other parts of Africa, thanks to my previous presenters as well. So we share quite a lot in common. The, the products we have, you have live pigs, you have the pork, and then uh, the roasted pork, as the, it is popularly known, the pork joints. And also sausages, we also have the sausages here. So pork now has also found itself to the supermarkets and other specialized shops are coming up. When it comes to slaughter, um, it ranges from behind the house under a tree to a slaughter slab and uh, also uh, finally an abattoir. So we have all those mixtures happening um, in Uganda. Pig pork can be sold by the roadside or somebody can buy it and take it home and eat it. So we have pork butchers and the roadside pork joints. Um, again, the capital city takes quite a lot of, a lot of pork. And the, usually when we have celebratory days, we end up with the, a lot of pork and even maybe even more diseases, more ASF spreading around. Um, thanks to FAO, um, we have recently done a knowledge attitude and practices study, and we have been analyzing um, this, uh, this data, um, I think last week or so. And the, there are several aspects which came up within the value chain, um, housing of pigs, sharing of uh, breeding, breeding boars, um, visitors, 
coming to the premises. Uh, the food and the water sources stood out as very important. Presence of food baths at every at different stages of the farm also came up as important. Isolation and culling of sick pigs is also very important, but also surprisingly or interestingly, there are some people who didn't know anything about uh, uh, how to prevent um, ASF entering on the farm. So this is just a pre a snapshot of what was what we have been doing last last week under FAO, and um, we are also part of that. Um, <clears throat> again, the traders buy buy. Somebody can buy one pig or can buy two pigs. And uh, this, pig, this practice has been going on for quite a long time. And consumption of pork is not going down. This is because of the development, the urbanization, the forest expatriate group, which is also in Uganda, and the, the economic dynamics also uh, dictate. A bit about the epidemiology of this ASF. We have um, these four animals, or five. Or, yeah, we have the 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 warthog, we have the bush pig, we have the domestic pig, we have the soft tick, and they, they all behave differently in this uh, disease. The warthog stays in burrows, and the soft tick likes to feed on the on the warthog when the warthog goes to to sleep. But the, the, the tick does not like light. It stays in the burrow. It doesn't come out on the on the on the on the water hole when it comes out to eat. So we have got soft ticks here. We collected some of them from the national parks. And then I would quickly also add that the the, the water hog is nocturnal. It is only active during daytime. And then we have the bush pig, which is diurnal. And it does not sleep under a, a in a in a barrel. So there's quite a very interesting dynamic of ASF distribution and spread in here. These two meet uh, meet not in the very same hall because they sleep differently and they move differently. Actually, the the what the bush pig, as you shall see later, it moves into uh, the farmland. So that makes the epidemiology of African swine fever interesting but also a um, complex complex. I just wanted to bring that up for the, for the audience as well. So um, <clears throat> we have several uh, national parks and around them, we have got uh, uh, farmers of all kinds from crop and the, also uh, pigs. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll move on here and we show you some of the work that we um, have been doing here in Uganda also to try to elucidate, find out the importance of these wild pigs. This, in this case here, this is a, a, a bush pig and we went out and we trapped it and we, want, we put a radio collar on the, on the pig and try to find out how far this, what, this uh, um, bush pig moves. Does it move into the farmland? Where does it spend its time? Um, <clears throat> again, for the, for the warthogs, Again, um, we went out, we made some efforts um, to try and find out the importance uh, or the role of this uh, warthog, this bush pig, as far, no, this warthog, as far as the ASF is concerned. Same mechanism, trap the, trap the, the, the warthog, and then you put a radio collar on that. It calls for quite some effort. We also want to know um, what are its dynamics, this uh, uh, bush pig. Do they move at what time? How what how big is the family? So again, in the different national parks, this is an opportunity which we took up and went up and they put up camera traps so that we're able to study the population size, the family size, and eventually launch an attack to get some of them, um, to get some of the uh, bush pigs and see uh, the virus presence, the antibodies and everything, and how far they can they can move. So we, we looked out, so you, in order to find the, the importance or the contribution of this uh, wild pig or the bush pig to, uh, to piggy, to the domestic pigs, and as far as the SF is concerned, we set out and we asked some question, we asked question, we put, launched questionnaires, used the camera trap study and also observations. And what we found out was quite interesting. Um, 
in here down the, the yellowish part is the, uh, the national park and the white part is the uh, homestead. So not the uh, areas which are near the, the national park. So you see um, evidence of uh, footprints of, of bush pigs um, and also camera sightings of bush pigs in areas that are near national parks. So this brings up the importance of uh, investigating the role of these uh, bush pigs or the role of wild pigs as far as the African swine fever uh, spread is, is concerned. So um, we saw that uh, um, the bush pigs actually visit crop fields, not the wart hogs. The bush pigs visit the, cross, the crop fields and the, some areas could be more at risk depending on what crops they are growing and also what animals are being kept. Therefore, I think it would be very important if we went out and mapped it in all these areas surrounding the national parks, uh, map out which homesteads keep pigs, and then it could be rolled out for a larger to a larger area. And why not even for the whole continent, wherever there is SF and the wildlife, to try and the, uh, elucidate the importance of these wild, wild pigs. Um, what is there to another aspect of uh, risk factors and what we can do to minimize that? Well, there have been many outbreaks in the country and the farmers have registered the many losses. Um, they report usually through the chain of command, through the local vet to the sub-county and finally to the district veterinary officer, which event, who eventually reports to the CVO and then the information flows back like that. Then they put up control mechanisms. The easiest, the best now they always do is to put a quarantine as we, to prevent the spread of the disease to other, other areas. Um, <clears throat> in some cases, uh, we at the, at the ministry in Uganda, we always go out and collect the samples. And this vary depending on the situation that you, you find at hand. It could be blood, spleen, or whatever you can find, and then come back and do a laboratory confirmation. Thanks for the capabilities in the country. We can now do the, the confirmation in here. Of course, not disregarding our, our partners as well. Again, <clears throat> thanks to, to uh, support from FAO, we have uh, drafted the SF control strategy for the country and the, where we envisage um, to, to have SF no longer being a problem, where we envisage to, for the pork industry to contribute to food security, to reduce on poverty, and the, make sure that the pig production goes on sustainably. Um, I would quickly add that uh, as we are doing, as we, as we speak this week, again, thanks to FAO Uganda, we are doing, we are drafting the contingency plan, the SF contingency plan. We have, we have the strategy in place. Now we are, we, we are looking at the contingency plan. What do we do if there's an outbreak which comes out? So that one is ongoing and we, we, we are happy to report. We shall divulge it, more details will come out. But the, the strategy has got four pillars or four objectives. Um, improving the capacity in the country, detect, prevent, and respond to SF, um, coordination and cooperation framework for control of SF, that includes task forces from the hierarchical task forces, just like you see for Ebola and other diseases, countries have task forces for that. Um, increase the competence of pork and pig products in the domestic and also international markets. I'm sure many people would like to eat pork from Uganda. So uh, this, if we do this, then that would be very nice. Um, and then data, 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 improve communication and data management. Because if we don't have data, then we cannot measure ourselves on how far we have come or where we are, we are going. And then other factors uh, come in and they are almost the same as all over, but this is also interesting. Husbandry practices play a big role. Where do people get their boas? Where do they get uh, their feeds? What do they do with the visitors when they are coming to the, to the farm? Movement of pigs, as somebody has mentioned previously, still stands out as a very important uh, weakness. So if we control movement of pigs, 
that would quite go a long way to reduce the spread of this ASF and also other diseases. So um, the, the vectors, yes, they are there, they, they play a big role. Uh, the source of the feed, um, that plays a big role because you're telling this pig farmer to boil their the swim for maybe 80, 80 degrees or for how long, 20 minutes, then what will they use to cook their own food? And then the aspect of wildlife livestock interface is very important, which we should also uh, advocate for to look into. Um, again, I've talked about that destruction of affected flock. Yes, um, but remember, we don't have a control, a, 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 a compensation, but we have we the law advocates for destruction of the infected flock. So uh, I should also mention we're reviewing animal our Animal Diseases Act to take care of this as a country. Many times um, on-farm slaughter takes place. And the, usually when you boil the meat to a certain degree and the amount of time, yes, it could be safe for, 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 for consumption and doesn't spread the disease. Farmers need to be trained. Awareness is very important um, because then many go, some go into pig farming and they, are not, they don't have the requisite information. So the ministry and partner organizations are coming up with communications, relevant communications, so that will bring awareness about this disease to the country. Um, FAO is supporting uh, us quite a lot, would encourage other partners to join hands. And then we also advocate for screening uh, the, the, the stock, wherever one is getting their stock from within the country, they should be able to, to screen it in a way to try and minimize uh, this, the effect of these risky risk factors. I thank you. Je vous remercie. Thank you very much. Um, any questions regarding this presentation in this country? I don't see any.